Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody didn't bring out their spring lawn furniture early because it would be in your neighbor's yard this morning. But it's good to see all of you this morning. As usual, we begin with a hymn, Happy Palm Sunday, and we're going to stand up. We're going to sing our first hymn, All Glory, Loud, and Honors, number the first one. Thank you, excellent. Our next hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. And you may be seated. 
All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody this morning. Thanks for being here. Um, just a few announcements for uh, for the morning. Uh, in case you were wondering about uh, communion today, we we're going to do that next week. So that's uh, why uh, the elements are not out. So we're going to be doing that uh, next week. So if you're going to be here with us for Easter Sunday, um, we hope you will be. Uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, then uh, there is at the end of the service there'll be a couple of things in the entryway on uh, on your way out that you'll want to pay attention to there will be a, another birthday card for you to sign your name to for the birthday gift that will be given out this week and uh, there'll also be uh, some palm fronds uh, in the back as well for you to to take home and uh, and keep waving uh, joyously as you as you drive home just roll the window down and uh, and put it out the window if you want. Um, but uh, yeah, so on your on your way out this morning, just be sure to to look on the little um, on the little top of the cabinet there and see uh, see what all we have uh, have there. Uh, okay, so uh, as as we're all aware, Easter is next week. We are doing our um, celebrate family Easter event next Sunday. Uh, the start time for that is eight forty five. Uh, so. And the main, as we've been saying, the main idea is to have breakfast with each other. Uh, so if you're going to be here with us, uh, we're asking that you bring some food with you. Simple food, uh, nothing, nothing too elaborate, but just simple food, but also uh, enough to share. Because if we have some, some different people have been invited, if they come, they might not be bringing food. So we want to have food for them to be able to enjoy as well. Uh, but we're going to just hang out with each other and um, and have some good conversation and, and enjoy the morning together before our uh, Easter service. So uh, 8.45, if you can be here, we'll be right here in this room. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to, to talk to me uh, uh, before you leave today or early in the week coming up, and we'll get those, uh, get those answered for you. So 8.45, and, and then our service. Our regular service will start at uh, at ten, and there are a few more invitations, uh, few more invitations uh, as as well. Uh, it looks like the wind has calmed down a little bit, but um, I don't know what the internet is doing. It was not happy this morning, uh, that's for sure. So uh, live stream, if it's gone, um, yeah, I'm getting I'm getting this from the back for our signal. Uh, so it's probably not gonna not gonna stay in there. That's uh, it's not purposeful. It's it's the wind and um, not not us. So if it goes out, we apologize. Just come back uh, later uh, later in the week. We'll have the recording posted um, at the different places that we usually post uh, post that information. Uh, Okay, um, one, um, just one last thing for, uh, for this morning, and it actually, um, there was something that happened this morning as well that just kind of fits in with, with my mindset this morning. Uh, this past week has been tough, uh, just across the country in, in so many ways. Just, it seemed like every day there was just some new um, terrible news event that was that was going on and and so forth and um, uh, there was a gentleman that stopped in this morning I kind of know him he he attended a little bit years and years ago um, he was asking if they could use the parking lot this evening uh, because uh, their adult son passed away earlier this week as well um, sadness abounds uh, chaos abounds. Tragedy uh, is is everywhere right now, um, and and for me over this past week is just these stories can continue to hit. And this, when we should be celebrating and soon to be happiness and all of that kind of stuff, um, of just that message that we've been trying to wrestle with that we are the aroma of Christ, uh, and. And what we have seen over this past week, for sure, just shows again the the necessity of that for us to be this beautiful aroma of Christ out in the world. Because um, it, it's just people need Jesus. They they might not even realize it at this moment, but but they need Jesus. They need to hear about Jesus. And um, we gather on Sunday. As as the 
gathered church, and that is good and, and right and beautiful. Um, but it's been it's been getting me me thinking in this regard with all of this that I don't know if any of you um, are familiar with this. I I struggle with perfume. Uh, I have allergies, so if if you ever wear perfume and we're talking and all of a sudden things go bad, it's not you, it's the perfume, um, right? And uh, if, if you ever had to walk into a, a Bath and Body Works store, that's, uh, I'm done, I can't do it, right? Um, and when I was a kid, like walking in the mall through the Macy's or JCPenney or whatever, like at the perfume counter, right? I would like hold my face and run like as, as fast as I could or go all the way around through like women's clothes. It didn't matter. Like I just had to avoid that section to get, to get out, out the door. Right. And I always wondered how can any fragrance be distinct in that place? Be, and I would see people like trying to smell and I'm like, how can you smell any, this cloud of smell is just, I only smell one thing. Bad, like it's just it's not good, right? Um, if you take the illustration too far, it falls apart, and it's getting really close to that anyway. Here's what I'm trying to get at, right? We gather, we got aroma all over the place. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good, but it's got to get out. So when we go back out, we got to remember this because there's chaos. Everywhere. There's, there's difficulty everywhere. And people are looking for this aroma. They might not have the words for it yet. They might not have full recognition of it yet. But as these days continue to go on, we are going to have more and more opportunities to share about our Savior Jesus with people who, who are going to want to hear because what has happened and what is going on is going to bring them to a place of saying, all my other answers are gone. I'm ready to listen, right? Uh, so I'm glad you're here. Let's keep gathering. But let's not forget that we go out and we share this fragrance with our neighbors, with our friends, our coworkers, not in a, not in a pushy way, offensive way, anything like that, but just in the right way, in the, in the Jesus way, we go out and we share our fragrance, all right? Um, so uh, I'm, I'm in a heavy place again. My heart and mind is in a heavy place. I know many of us are, are there this morning, so we're going to um, engage with some of this again in, in a little bit, but we're going to sing, we're going to pray, we're going to hear God's word, uh, and so we, we, we have time together, and that's good and beautiful. Uh, let's pray, and then we'll get going with the, with the rest of the service. Heavenly Father, um, thank you for uh, the sunshine this morning, and we just pray for uh, uh, protection for any of those who are dealing with effects of wind or anything like that that's uh, going on this morning. Um, and, uh, and Father, we just pray. We pray for our world. Um, I'm thankful that you, that you know. You know everything that's going on. You know more than, than we do, um, and, and you, you stand fast. You, uh, you are still with us. Um, so, Father, encourage us this morning and, and help us as we, as we gather together uh, to, to worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning again, everybody, and good morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. We are absolutely standing here this morning because we all need Christ, right? Amen. And our people who are facing tough decisions 
are also in need of Christ. So I agree, we do need to speak up as a people. So be sure to be aware that even when we're going out into our community, right, that we are the aroma of Christ, that we are sharing the love, the grace and compassion of Christ, but we're also standing firm in his truth, right? Yeah, amen. So thank you for sharing that. Um, The live stream, if you um, couldn't hear what was going on, um, we are lamenting um, the passing of the bill of full-term abortion, and we're asking people to reach out to their local government um, just to continue to stand up for the unborn, right? Friends, when we come together this morning, we're singing Hosanna. Today is Palm Sunday. When we sing Hosanna, we are saying, Lord, save now, right? So would you please stand up with us as we sing?
please pray with me before we go on to the rest of our songs. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning as a broken people. God, I sing because I need you. I pray because I need you, Lord. And uh, this morning, um, especially with the reminder of um, what is happening in our local state, Lord, we would just pray that you would touch our hearts in the way that only you can. When we sing break our hearts for what breaks yours, Lord, we mean that in every way, in every idol that is in the way of restoring relationships and everything that holds people down, Lord, that you would set us free in the name of Jesus. Lord, um, for those moms who are um, considering full-term abortion, in, in this moment, just with our people, God, I'm praying that you would touch their hearts in the way um, that tells them there are other options, God. And I pray that us as a people, us as Gateway, us as the people of Plymouth, us as the people in New Hampshire would rise up in support for people who feel like they have no other options, God, because we know that you see all. We know that you see depravity. We also know that you see um, need and pain and suffering um, and desperation, God. And you are the God of grace and comfort, but also of truth. Lord, I'm praying that... Um, even if there's anybody here in this particular group that if we have been personally touched by um, the abortion of any way, God, that you would remind us that you are the God of grace and restoration, and that there's nothing and nowhere we can go that is apart from you or your light or also your forgiveness, God, when we turn to you in repentance. God, I pray that as a people, you would strengthen us to support each other and to stand with one another and to help heal each other. God, because we can only do this with you, and we can only do this with your spirit. And we pray that this morning as we are hurting, that we would also see your love and be reminded of your joy. God, because you are also good, and because even though things are hard, God, we know that you are still in control, and that you are leading us with your spirit. God, lead us with your spirit, and remind us of your goodness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Sing, oh, I've heard. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell.
worship team is going to stay standing here with us because after our scripture reading, we're going to have a special. Uh, so I, uh, I have a very long scripture reading for this morning. Um, uh, but uh, thanks for the music. Thanks for singing. Uh, our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 100. It's a Psalm of David. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's? The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. 
As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels. You mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. Let's have special music. Song that we're going to be singing next week for our Easter service, um, but it's such a beautiful song um, and is a really important um, message of the gospel. It's just a really quick, super laid out gospel message um, for who Jesus is and who we are in light of that. So if you know it, please feel free to sing along. If you catch on to it by the end, it's pretty repetitive. Please sing along, but if not, please just sit back and enjoy and pray.
guys so much for listening. Thank you for that, that song. I look forward to singing it again uh, next week as well. Uh, I'm glad for uh, a reprieve uh, in, these, in these brief moments of uh, just being out of the out of the news cycle, away from uh, just being able to quickly uh, tap on the phone and look at what's going on and so forth. Uh, this this has been uh, good good for me, and I hope it has been for you as well. Uh, as uh, mentioning earlier, the world continues to be consistent in chaos, brokenness, tragedy, and sin. Many tears have been shed. Uh, this past week, and many, many more are going to continue to be shed, and uh, the temptation, at least, at least for me, the temptation for numbness uh, with, with each new story that arrives, uh, it's, it's knocking at the door of my heart. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it is for you or not. Uh, If it is, battle against that, because numbness to these things uh, th- there is there is kind of like a protective thing that, that we can go into, um, but but to become numb to it, we're, we're going to remove ourselves from it, and and we we the Church of Christ, we have to stay in it. We got to be we got to be in this world. Uh, and today, Palm Sunday, triumphal entry, uh, it's it's meant to be uh, celebratory, and of course it is. But it isn't just that simple, is it? We've learned that lesson again and again and again over the last several years for sure. The, this, this world is not a simple place. Someone has said, the tears of Jesus are the tears of God when he sees the needless pain and suffering in which humanity involves itself through foolish rebelling against his will. The tears of Jesus are the tears of God when he sees this senseless stuff going out, happening in this world. Thankfully, we know that our God isn't numb to it. He's not getting numb to it. We know that he isn't ignoring it. We know that he is with us as he always has and as he always will be. Jesus is with us. I want to spend the next couple of moments reading for you, not my words, somebody else's. It's a Hosanna prayer. As uh, Olivia mentioned, and I'm going to mention it multiple times this morning as well, Hosanna is a cry for salvation. It's a prayer for salvation. And this prayer begins with Christ our King. Christ, our King, our world is overtaken by unwanted calamity and by a host of attending fears, worries, and insecurities. We witness suffering, confusion, and hardship multiplied around us. And we find ourselves swept up in these same anxieties and troubles dismayed by so many uncertainties. Now we turn to you, O God, in this season of our common distress. Be merciful, O Christ, to those who suffer, to those who worry, to those who grieve, to those who are threatened or harmed in any way by this upheaval. Let your holy compassions be active throughout the world even now, tending the afflicted, comforting the brokenhearted, and bringing hope to many who are hopeless. Use even these hardships to woo our hearts nearer to you, O God. Indeed, O Father, may these days of disquiet become a catalyst for conviction and repentance, for the tendering of our affections, for the stirring of our sympathies, for the refining of our love. We are your people, 
who are called by you. We need not be troubled or alarmed. Indeed, O Lord, let us love now more fearlessly, remembering that you created us and appointed us to live in these very places, in the midst of these unsettled times. It is no surprise to you that we are here now, sharing in this turmoil along with the rest of our society. For you have called your children to live as salt and light among the nations, praying and laboring for the flourishing of the communities where we dwell, acting as agents of your forgiveness, salvation, healing, reconciliation, and hope in the very midst of an often troubled world. And in these holy vocations, you have not left us helpless, O Lord, because you have not left us at all. Your spirit remains among us. Inhabit now your church, O Spirit of the risen Christ. Unite and equip your people for the work before them. Father, empower your children to live as your children. In times of distress, let us respond, not as those who would instinctively entrench for our own self-preservation, but rather as those who, in imitation of their Lord, would move in humble obedience toward the needs and hurts of their neighborhoods and communities. You were not ashamed to share in our sufferings, Jesus. Let us now be willing to share in yours, serving as your visible witness in this broken world. Hear now these words, you children of God, and be greatly encouraged. The Lord's throne in heaven is yet occupied. His rule is eternal, and his good purposes on earth will be forever accomplished. So we need never be swayed by the brief and passing panics of this age. You are the king of the ages, O Christ, and history is held in your Father's hand. We, your people, know the good and glorious end of this story. Our heavenly hope is secure. In this time of widespread suffering, then, let us rest afresh in the surpassing peace of that vision that your whole church on earth might be liberated to love more generously and sacrificially. Now labor in and through us, O Lord, extending and multiplying the many expressions of your mercy. Amen. We know it. It's no surprise. Today is Palm Sunday. We remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem before his arrest and crucifixion. It's a Hosanna day. What does Hosanna mean? Save us. Save us now, Lord. We usually enter into this Sunday singing a happy Hosanna, right? And thankfully, we still can. But we are getting more accustomed to crying from desperation for salvation. And so today, I want to try to get more to the essence of this story as opposed to historical details. Because of our living in the after and having the fullness of Scripture, we know the full story. We know the details, and there have been those that have gone and and, um, you can find them. They've put together historical stuff that is fantastic and and kind of puts you in that place, and and, um, we can easily find those. And and it's good to to study that for sure. But I want us to try to get more to the the heart of it, to the essence of it uh, this morning, to the living of it, to living this out into each day. So if you have a Bible and you want to join me, uh, if you don't, that's completely fine. But if you do, uh, Luke 17. Luke chapter 17. Um, In case you find it real quick and you're confused, uh, this isn't the triumphal entry yet. Uh, All right, we'll get there in a moment. But I want us to read a section, to hear a section first, uh, to take us into the triumphal entry. So in Luke 17, uh, beginning in verse 11, 
we have uh, this account of Jesus. Jesus is on the move. He is heading towards Jerusalem. He's doing all kinds of amazing things on his way. And it says, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In a sense, they're saying, Hosanna. Hosanna, Jesus. Hosanna, Savior. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is a Hosanna moment. These men, these ten men had leprosy. It was a terrible disease. It was a death sentence. It was a horrible death sentence. They were outcast from society. They could not live a normal life. Their existence for as long as they would continue to live with this would be horrible, terrible, never improving, always painful, always bad. There were a lot of barriers put in place to keep them out of community, to try to keep the disease from spreading, uh, and so forth. And then we also know that uh, we have a mixture of uh, Jews and Samaritans, and they did not get along. They hated each other and had no problems telling each other that they hated each other. But here, in this moment, in this Hosanna moment, what does that matter? The ten are together. All kinds of different things are, are mixed with them and so forth. But those things now take less prominence in their life. They're standing at a distance. Uh, it's been said possibly 50 yards. Uh, those were one of the rules that was put in place. So they were possibly 50 yards away, shouting with their loud voices. And I, wanna, I want you to just try to imagine the scene of these 10 men. This distance apart, if it is 50 yards waving their arms or possibly hands around their mouth, trying to project their voice uh, even further. Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy on us. Hosanna, Jesus. Save us. Save us now, Jesus. Jesus hears it. And what does Jesus say? Jesus is always doing something unexpected, right? And what does he do? Go to the priest. Go and find the priest, which, of course, was what they had to do. They had to go to a priest and be uh, determined to be clean so they could rejoin society and so forth. And so Jesus just, that's just, go to the priest. Go find the priest. So, still as lepers, they begin to go, and on their way, they are healed. They don't get that healing right away. They turn, they go, and on the way. There is something incredibly important about that. We're not going to dive into that. That's just extra credit for you if you want to take it and, and study it more. There's some, there is something... It's a stunning moment. It's a stunning moment. To still have the leprosy, but to turn and go and to begin to search out that priest. On the way, they were healed. 
Remember the 15th verse. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. He turns back. He comes back to find Jesus. A cry of Hosanna only becomes a song of hallelujah in the presence of Jesus. He comes back to the feet of Jesus. And now we have this happy Hosanna moment. We have this praising hallelujah song moment in the presence of Jesus. It seems that something deeper, more took place in the life of the Samaritan. Yes, it would seem the other nine were saved from their leprosy. But was that it? There was more that was going on. The Samaritan found it because he came back to Jesus. Just a couple pages over, if you have your Bible, or a couple scrolls of a thumb, probably. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, and of course, just listening in as well is, is fine. We're going to hear the account from Luke of the triumphal entry, so beginning in verse 28. When Jesus had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent to the disciples saying, Go into the village in front of you where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And of course, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, Jesus wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. So we have this amazing celebration. And yet, at at the end of it, what do we see? We see Jesus weeping. We see this mixture. Victory. Celebration, sadness, difficulty, prophecy of what would, be, what would be happening to Jerusalem in the coming years, right? Jesus enters Jerusalem, and he has fulfilled prophecy by doing this. And he is proclaiming, making no mistake, he is saying, I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God. And that's why the religious leaders were so angry. They knew what he was saying. They knew what was going on. They were saying, stop this. Rebuke your disciples. Make this stop. He said, no, it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. The crowd of his disciples is crying out, Hosanna. 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 You are the king. We praise you. They were in a difficult moment of life as well. And there was this, this realness of this cry, this save us now from their, from their situation. They wanted to be saved from it. They didn't know everything that was going on, of, of course, as we know. But it was this real life 
what we are experiencing now. Right? We see, we know different people were not happy about this. Uh, but it just, it struck me this, this week, seeing all the news, going through all those things, and just being reminded again of Jesus coming to, to the end of this amazing moment, and, and we see him weeping, grieving over what is to take place. The deeper essence that I want us to try and dwell with here in our moment is this. Until Jesus' return, there will continue to be a cry of Hosanna. We will, we will cry happy Hosannas, but there is always going to be this save us now out of desperation cry as well. From, from our lips, from, from the hearts of, of those around us. Until he comes back, this world is co- going to continue to groan, Hosanna. The joy of hallelujah will only fully be realized now and later in his presence. If we want joy, we will not find it apart from Jesus. It doesn't matter what we pursue. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter. Any, if, if Jesus is not involved, there will be no joy. Not now, not later. There will be those in this world who will receive something from Jesus, and they will walk away. And they'll just keep walking away from the presence of Jesus. And there will be those who hate and try to quiet, and try to destroy. You can't get away from that. So I know it's hard. I know it's tough some days. Uh, and as I was working through this myself in, in just a personal way, I was reminded of a common phrase from people who are trying to pursue a healthier way of life. Uh, going to the gym, lifting weights, exercising, different stuff. You know, you'll hear a lot of them say something at some point like this. I didn't feel like getting up and going to the gym today. So I got up and went to the gym today. Right? We may not always feel like turning back to praise him. Or to enter into his presence or to stay in his presence. We're not always going to feel like it. So, let's do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Knowing that is the place to be. It's the best place to be. It's the only place to be. I'm running running short on time. um, But this week was weird. And it was weird in a lot of ways. um, Because I I was stalled in being able to get this on paper for many different reasons and so forth. And then just something new would pop up. And uh, yesterday evening, after dinner, about to get the girls to bed, uh, I hear a story. I wish I had heard this story earlier. It's not my story. The story belongs uh, to a little girl with blonde hair about this tall. (laughs) Uh, Our youngest daughter. And uh, so she's telling us about something that happened at school this past week. A classmate of hers comes up, first grade. They're in first grade. And the classmate says something to the effect of, how did this world get to be here? How does, how does all this stuff exist? First grader, thinking through these existential questions. And the little blonde girl is trying to wade through, how much do I say? What do I say? Can can I just say it? And she says, yeah, I'm gonna gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. But the classmate just kept coming, kept asking, kept asking, kept asking. So finally she said, I'm just gonna say it. said, well, it's God. That's right. <laughs> God 
God did this. God made all. And the classmate looked at her and said, I don't think that's right. I'm going to go ask my phone. (laughs) Is that not an answer of today? Praise him loudly, friends. Our beautiful Savior is good. He is so lovely. He's the King of kings. The Lord of lords. And he has and he is turning our hosannas into hallelujah. Live this week in confidence and faith as the aroma of Christ, sharing the good news. Jesus has triumphed. And we can be with him no matter what the phones say. (laughs) Forget those evil things. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Hosanna. Hallelujah. Maranatha. Let's pray. Father, give us love. Because once we get past the humor, the heartbreak of I'm going to go ask my phone settles in. And we know that this this world, this precious world is perishing. And there is a constant cry people don't even know what they're saying. They're not even using this word, but this is what they're crying. They're crying, Hosanna. They don't even know who they're crying out to. And so they're looking for that hallelujah with everything else other than your Son, our Savior, Jesus. So Father, help us if we have a chance, if we have a chance to share, to love. But Father, we need hearts of mercy and grace and forgiveness. We need a work done in us continually. Because this world is tough. We praise you that on this day, and tomorrow, and next day, and Easter Sunday, and every other day, we don't have to educate you about this world. Mm-hmm. You know it. And that makes all the difference in the world. Father, help us. Help us to turn back, to stay into the presence of Jesus with loud voices, beautiful voices, to sing your song. I don't know what is to come. Only you do. Give us faith. Bless my friends. Encourage my friends. Help my brothers and sisters, Father, as they face some challenges this week, as they face some decisions this week, as they uh, as they will spend time with those 
who are struggling and suffering and hurting. Help that aroma to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. To send out the message of life and life in abundance with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dennis. Friends, you know, as I'm thinking about the triumphal entry and I'm thinking about crying Hosanna and laying of the palm leaves and just watching Jesus enter into the city in this midst of both desperate cry for salvation and also celebrating that their salvation is here, I can't help but wonder what did they think was going to happen. But I'm so grateful that I do know what happened and that we know that our salvation is in Jesus and that we have that answer. So would you please stand with us um, because the answer is just drawing close to God, right? So please sing with us. Well, you've come to bring peace, to be love, to be chapter 2, 
verse 20, um, and I'm praying that this would be our hope and our reminder and our encouragement in the Easter season this year. Um, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you for being here with us this week. Please go in peace.